Conservation laws are rules in physics that tell us that a particular quantity of a closed system remains the same over the course of time. For example, the total energy of a closed system at time t1 must equal the total energy at time t2, even if within that time the energy is being converted from one form to another. Similarly, the total momentum of a system before and after any interaction is always conserved, as well as the total angular momentum. Even the quantum world has conservation laws, like lepton number and strangeness. But where do these conservation laws come from? Why is it that the total energy and momentum of a closed system must always stay the same? An insight into these laws comes from German mathematician Emmy Noether, who deduced that if a physical system has a continuous symmetry, then it must have a corresponding conservation law. Or in other words, continuous symmetries imply conservation laws. But what is a continuous symmetry? The word symmetry is usually used when something remains the same when it's flipped about an axis, for example, like flipping a butterfly about its body. Unlike the writing, which appears back to front, the butterfly looks the same when reflected about its axis of symmetry. This is a discrete symmetry. It's only symmetric under a finite line of symmetry. But Noether's theorem deals with continuous symmetries, for example, translational symmetry. The butterfly looks the same when shifted from one point in space to any other point of space. Similarly, temporal symmetry means the butterfly looks the same when shifted from one point in time to another. Another type of continuous symmetry is rotational symmetry. Since the butterfly doesn't appear the same under rotations other than 360 degrees, it doesn't have rotational symmetry. However, the pentagon looks the same any time we rotate it by a multiple of 72 degrees. In fact, the sphere looks the same when rotated under any number of degrees. We can't even tell that it's rotating. So continuous symmetry is the idea of remaining the same under a type of motion through space or time, like a shift of coordinates or rotation, not a reflection. To understand the mathematics of these symmetries, we switch from regular Newtonian mechanics, where the motion of a system is described using force equations like F equals MA, to Lagrangian mechanics, where we deal with a quantity called a Lagrangian, usually denoted by a capital letter L, and is defined as the kinetic energy minus the potential energy of a system. For example, for a particle falling under the influence of gravity, we have the Lagrangian m half v squared minus mgx. The way we describe the motion of our system in Lagrangian mechanics is by subbing our Lagrangian into an equation called the Euler-Lagrange equation. To make sense of this, let's use the Lagrangian we looked at earlier and break it down term by term. First, we look at delta L over delta V, which is the partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to the velocity V. This gives us mv, which is the momentum of the particle. In fact, for any Lagrangian, the der partial derivative with respect to v is always the momentum of the system. Next, we look at delta L over delta x, the partial derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to position x. This gives us minus mg, which is the force experienced by the particle under the influence of gravity. When we put these together, we get an equation of the form the derivative with respect to t of the momentum minus the force is equal to zero. Or in other words, the rate of change of momentum of the system is equal to the force, which is equivalent to Newton's second law of motion, which says that F equals ma, or force equals mass by acceleration. Lagrangian mechanics is a way to describe the motion of a system using energies instead of forces, where L is the kinetic minus the potential energy of the system, and the Euler-Lagrange equation gives us equations of motion. To use Lagrangian mechanics to describe Noether's theorem, we equate continuous symmetries in the Lagrangian to continuous symmetries in nature, and we do this by defining something called a cyclic coordinate, which is a quantity that does not explicitly appear in the Lagrangian. Let's consider a Lagrangian where the potential energy is some constant c, since x doesn't explicitly appear in this Lagrangian, x is a cyclic coordinate. The Lagrangian doesn't depend on x, so it stays the same when we replace x with x plus a. In other words, our system has translational symmetry. Now let's compute the Euler-Lagrange equation for our Lagrangian. The partial derivative of L with respect to v is mv as we had before, but the partial derivative with respect to x is 0, since L is independent of x 
So we get an equation of motion in the form, the rate of change of momentum equals zero. So the momentum is constant or conserved. We have shown that in a system where x is a cyclic coordinate, the momentum is conserved. And since x being cyclic is equivalent to our system having translational symmetry, we see that the conservation of momentum arises from translational symmetry. Similarly, we can use Lagrangian mechanics to show that rotational symmetry is equivalent to the conservation of angular momentum and temporal or time symmetry is equivalent to the conservation of energy. So Noto's theorem shows us how these rigid conservation laws are equivalent to continuous symmetries that we see in the world around us.